Hello Steelers and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I painted these 15mm French Napoleonic miniatures. They're mostly from Blue Moon and also from AB miniatures as well. This is going to be a step-by-step -step process and I'm going to show you basically how you want to be painting these to get them on the table. They're not award-winning figures by any standards, uh, but they are for gaming with and they adhere to the three-foot rule, which means if you can't see it from three foot away, then there's no point painting it. So, let's get on with this video and I'll show you how I did it. First step is to base them. And I'm basing these for sharp practice, so they're on individual bases. These are 15mm diameter MDF bases. I think they're 2mm thick. I just buy these off the internet. Some people use pennies. I don't because I think at 19 millimeters a penny is just slightly too big for a 15 millimeter figure. But use whatever it is you want. I do put them in sabo bases when I'm using them on the tabletop. So this is why I use these round bases uh, so I can remove individual figures for casualties. The next stage is by far the most boring, but I try to do as many of these figures at once just because to get it out of the way. Uh, sit down, listen to a podcast or something and just work your way around the figure's base using polyfiller just to fill up the space between the base itself and also there, uh, the little base that is on the bottom of the figure itself. This is incredibly dull. As I say, I use a flat head screwdriver with a little dab of polyfiller, uh, spackle in the US, and fill it, basically try to make it as smooth as possible. You can do this with your finger if you want, and just wipe off any of the excess around the edge as well. And once the bases have dry, I'll go back and start the undercoating process. Now you can use anything for this, you can use brush on, or you can use spray can, or you can do what I'm doing here and using my airbrush, just spraying white on the figures. And the reason I'm using white is because these French are about 70% white anyway with their trousers and their belts and things. So this undercoat is serving two purposes. I'll do two two layers of this just to make sure it's thick enough but it's, it's not only is it giving me a primer for the figure anyway but it is also pretty much painting half of the figure straight up uh, so I work my way through all of these it doesn't take very long with uh, the airbrush or with whichever method you're using but just make sure you uh, be careful and don't block up too much details on them once that primer and white is dry, you can then start to actually block in the basic colours. I always start with blue because it's probably the next biggest colour really and it's also the one that everything else is sat on top of being that it's their tunics. So I'll paint their tunics. It's basically sleeves and the tails of the coats, which is pretty much all you can see on the French. At this point, don't worry about being too messy because you're always going to go back anyway at some point later and probably go over. So I'm just basically getting these basic colours on. This is a Humbrol Blue. I think it's Humbrol Mid Blue. You can use whatever you want. Sometimes I'll use Prussian Blue, which is a bit darker, as a nice base coat for these because I'm going to lighten them up anyway in later stages. But as I say, it's just a case of working your way through uh, just filling in those bits and pieces of the uniform that you can see. Make sure you have uh, your research material in front of you as well. Uh, I will find the page on the Census Yours website, which I'll put a link for in the description of whichever unit I'm painting. So I've got that on the screen in front of me so I know exactly what colours I'm trying to follow. But one point to make on the colours there really is you've got to think as well, this is uh, the early 19th century when things weren't made by machines, they weren't the various dyes and textile places that were producing these uniforms would be completely different, they would have been made all over France by different workshops so the actual colours and hues that you're going to get in them are very different there was very little uniformity in the uniforms if that makes sense so really any mid blue will do for the French at this point also when they're on campaign uniforms go different colours as well so they could get bleached in the sun uh, they get damaged by rain or snow or any kind of thing like that so, uh, the weather just has a massive effect on cloth especially cloth of that particular period being that it's wool the dye if the dye is not particularly good then it will also bleach out pretty quickly as well so you can kind of within reason be pretty wide on whichever color you want to work with as long as it looks good to you that's the bottom line here 
Then I start painting the backpacks for the French army. These I paint in brown because they were fur covered. Apparently they stunk like hell when they got wet because it was animal fur. So I'll just paint these with brown. This is Flat Earth by Vallejo. I'll put a list of the colours that I've used in the descriptions below. So you can see exactly what I've used for these. But this is just a very easy, basic paint over the top of the backpack. And as I say, when you've, if your blue has gone onto this at some point, you're now covering it up. So I wouldn't worry too much about being particularly careful with the blue in the first case. Whilst I'm using that flat earth colour, I will also paint the bases as well because I'm going to flock these later on. So I'll just paint them in flat earth like this. These will just get an Agrax wash with the rest of the figure and that will be the base done. But nice and simple, I'll do this at the same time that I'm painting their backpacks as well just to kill two birds with one stone basically. Next paint is grey, so this is just neutral grey by Vallejo and this is for the bedroll or for the grey coat that is stored at the top of the backpack. Now the French also have grey gaiters. I haven't painted these, they are actually modelled on the figure themselves but I noticed in the past when I've painted them and then once I've washed them they actually get blended into their boots anyway so I don't bother. You could do if you wanted to, I haven't bothered. As I say I'm adhering to the three foot rule. If you can't see it from three foot away I'm not bothering painting it and those gaiters you certainly can't see them from three foot away. After white, the next big paint job is the black. And I start this after I've done some of the other colours. So this is on their shakos. This is also on their uh, ammunition pouch as well on their back. Any scabbers that they might have. And also their boots as well that you can see pointing through. So this takes a little while because there's quite a lot of it. And you also have to be a little bit detailed as well on this. Just be careful. Again... As I keep saying, don't worry too much if you splurge some of the paint around a little bit. You can always go back and repaint the areas that you've put paint onto. I do this all the time. I'll just go back and just check where I've maybe hit uh, another colour with one colour and then just go through all the figures and just try and neaten them, and meet, neaten them up and, and tighten them up again with the original colours. Then we move on to the flesh, so this is just the faces and the hands really. Very simple job, just taking a very small brush. I use Vallejo's tan yellow, uh, simply because I think it looks more like Caucasian flesh than their sunny skin tones or the other skin tones that Vallejo produced. They're slightly too pink. For the distance that we're doing these figures from, I think the uh, tan yellow looks a lot better. It's a very simple job, very easy, just work your way through all the figures. Again, try not to get too much on of the paint onto any other areas, but you can always go back later on and just cut those areas and again just neaten them up, so I wouldn't worry. This is just about blocking colours in and ensuring that we have everything in place before we start to do highlights later. Next thing to paint is the pom-pom on the top of the shako. Now, I'm painting these ones green because these are for the first company of the unit that I'm painting. Uh, if you want to paint them in the different companies, they were sky blue for the second company, uh, orange for the third, and violet for the fourth. But I'm just painting these green because it's simple. Uh, there's about 140 men in a company, so it's going to take a little while before I start moving on to the second, third, and fourth uh, companies at this point so I'm quite happy with it green this is just Vallejo's intermediate green and just again ensure that you're neat when putting this on then it's onto the muskets and I'm using beige brown for this which is my wood color for anything that has been treated wood treatments it's quite a nice uh, just slightly lighter than mid brown uh, and it works very nice for muskets and things like that so I'll just work my way around the muskets just again being as neat as I can with these just filling in those lines I also paint the hair as well in the beige brown uh, you could do it in different colors if you wanted to I don't bother but because you can see it I'll make sure I've covered it up with something at least the next colour is the red for the collars and cuffs. The French didn't differentiate their units by their collars and cuffs like the British, for example. And they were all red within Le Grand Army. So this is a very simple job of literally going around those collars and the cuffs just with a very small, thin brush and a small amount of paint on the end of it. Just to be very neat here, if you can, because, again, you can go back and cut in other paints but it's better to get it first time round if you can this just takes a little a little bit of practice but once you've got one you soon fly through them 
I will then block in gunmetal grey on the muskets, on the metals on the muskets, so the rifle barrels and also on the bayonets as well. Uh, I'm afraid I'm sorry, I kind of going in front of the camera a little bit there, but you can see the figures on the right. I've just basically gone round the, uh, the bayonet, bayonets and the muskets and finish those off with the metal. We're pretty much onto the last stages now of the actual uh, block painting of these figures. There's usually a couple of little bits and pieces that I might do just before the end, like the gourds that the French carry as water bottles, or maybe even some of the straps and things in white. Uh, but then I'll move on to using the cheat in a can, which is Agrax Earthshade, and literally, liberally, put this all over the figures uh, that you've just painted uh, I know it looks like uh, you're going to absolutely ruin them but this is probably the best wash that I've ever used and I use this on everything so I basically put this all over them leave them to dry and then we'll start to come back and look at the highlights the first of those highlights, once the Agrax is dried, is the flesh. So I'll just take the tan yellow that I used before as a base coat and just go back and just apply this to some of the raised areas on the faces and on the hands. Just an incredibly light touch really here just to make those pop a little bit because as humans we do notice people's faces. So I try to do that so they're not sunk in with the Agrax wash itself. Then I move on to the blue of the coat, so I'm taking the again the original coat of paint that I used, this is the Humbrol, and I will just add this to some of the highlights on the cloth. So not right into the recesses, but just where the cloth itself is slightly raised on the figure. You'll be able to see it when you're painting them, and you'll be able to tell as well if you're hitting the right spots. Very easy, very simple to do. And I'll do exactly the same with the red on those collars and cuffs, again using a very small brush and a small amount of paint on that brush. Just literally hit the bits that are higher than the rest on the figure. This is a nice thing about painting 3D models, is you can see which bits are actually raised. And just work your way through, you'll notice these things pop out really well once you've just got that highlight on. And that's kind of what you're going for really. Green next for the pom-poms, just a dab on the top, again just where the lights would hit these, uh, they're supposed to be dark green anyway so I'm just trying to make that tiny bit of light show on the top of them. This is the same, uh, exactly the same uh, process I use for all my highlighting, very simple, use the base colour and just go back over that Agrax. The grey highlight is again neutral grey, just over some of the tiny lines where the grey coat itself is, is stuck up underneath its own straps. So again, this is just to bring out that higher part of the model itself. White is probably the hardest part to highlight here just because there's so much of it, but I'll do it after everything else because it is one of the highest highlights on the uh, the figures themselves. So I'll basically go around the edges of the tunics, at the bottom the white lines, I will then do the raised areas of the trousers as well, uh, leaving some of the darker colours uh, of the original white paint and also that Agrax as well in the recesses. Just work your way around them. It takes a little while but be careful here and you will soon have a fine looking figure. I'll work on the cross belts as well at this point. Again just picking out various bits and pieces of detail and also the straps as well on the backpacks. The final highlight is some oily steel just onto the bayonets and onto the musket barrels as well, just again to pick out some of the metal. I don't really bother with doing any other highlights than this. You can if you want, I don't bother. Uh, there's not much point, I don't think. As I say, we're looking at these from three foot away generally on the table, so I'm happy enough that the bigger areas are highlighted. And that's them completed and highlighted. We just have to move on to the next stage now. And that next stage is to protect the figures with some spray varnish. I use Windsor & Newton's Professional Artist Spray Matte. I'll just give them a good spray. Uh, very easy, obviously spray it into a box in a well ventilated area using gloves and all the other safety equipment as you do. But just work your way through and ensure that they're all sprayed and protected. And then finally once the spray varnish is dry I will go with some PVA glue around the bases using some static grass, just sprinkle that on, and then that's flocked them. And that completes all the stages for painting these French infantry. And as I say, a very simple stage-by-stage -stage way of painting these French. You'll soon have plenty enough on the table for gaming purposes, 
uh, I certainly have at this point, especially for sharp practice. And also I've managed to make this video 15 minutes long for 15 millimeter figures. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please do subscribe. Also check out my Patreon and there will be more painting videos in the future. Thanks again for watching.